morning from Rothsay, Minnesota. We're on our way down to Schiller Park, Illinois, which in my mind is the same thing as Chicago, Illinois. We've got to deliver this lumber there first thing tomorrow morning. It's been a great day so far. We just woke up, but I just know it's going to be a good day. You gotta tell yourself that every day. It's going to be a good day. More often than not, it'll turn into a good day. It's what you make it. So we got this lumber behind us still. Four lifts on the front. Three in the center here. And two right at the back. And that pretty much equals our weight perfectly. It's almost right to the back here. So on my rear trailer axles here, I'm sitting at about 31,000 pounds on these two axles. And on my drive axles behind my truck there, I'm sitting at about 33,000 pounds, which is good because you want to carry the weight. You don't want to pull the weight. So you want, if you can, arrange it in a way that you have a little more weight on your drives than on your trailer. It'll give you a much smoother ride because if you have the heavier weight on these axles over every bridge connection and every bump, you're going to get a donkey kick. Your trailer's going to hit it and push your truck forward and it's going to be very uncomfortable. But if you carry the weight on your truck, it's a much smoother ride. Do you like my new stickers? I told you I was going to put the Canada flag on the truck. I also got it up here. Canada flag up there. And the flag of my province in Canada, Manitoba. Over there, and I got the US flag on my mud flaps. So I think I'm representing my my region that I that I haul in. Okay, so that is my province flag. I've told you this many times before. It's got the Union Jack in the top left corner there. And it's got the Cross of St. George with a buffalo beneath it. That is the flag of Manitoba. The flag of Ontario is exactly the same, except instead of a buffalo in there, it has three golden maple leaves. I think the buffalo looks better. Oh, really? Yeah, that's funny. Personally, it really does bother me that Manitoba's flag is practically identical to Ontario's flag. We're two very different provinces. Manitoba's Western Canada, Ontario is Eastern Canada, but for some reason our flags are almost identical. And they're very close to the original flag of Canada as well, which was the, the Royal Ensign, which was exactly like the Manitoba flag, red background, Union Jack on the top left, except the Canadian crest was where that buffalo crest is. That was the flag of Canada up until, what, 40 years ago or so? Is it a little more than that? 40, 50 years ago? And then they changed it to the maple leaf, which some people like it, some people don't. I don't know, but uh, I wish Manitoba had its own flag. It bothers me that they that they don't. It looks very much like Ontario's. But I don't trust the government right now to create a new flag because you know, with the way culture is right now, they would totally, totally mess it up with all their wokeness. They they would totally mess up the flag, and then the, the new flag wouldn't represent me whatsoever. And then I wouldn't like it, and I'd be sad. So uh, we're just gonna stick with it. We're just gonna stay. Let's just stick with the flag the way it is and uh, move forward. <laughs> it's not that big a deal. <laughs> I just, I, I like flags. They usually represent the people. The, the flag represents the people. It doesn't represent the land. Like, I, like the U.S. flag, for for instance. To me, it doesn't represent the land here. That, it, that they occupy. The United States flag to me represents the United States people, their constitution, their way of life, their, their belief system, you know? Flags are important to me. You know, you see a hammer and sickle flag, you, you know where they stand on a lot of issues. You see an American flag, you know where they stand on a lot of issues. You see a Canada flag, you're like, I don't know, it could be anything. Get out of here. I want to make it to Rochelle, Illinois before all the parking lot is full.
passing around Minneapolis St. Paul right now. And I've seen a couple of vehicles pass me today, you know, they got the little bumper stickers on them, right? Giving their little message to the world that nobody cares about. Yeah. I think that they look so ugly on vehicles. I always wonder why would you put a bumper sticker on your car and like deface your car and bring down the value even faster than it's already going down. I don't want to buy a car with a bunch of bumper stickers on it, you know what I mean? Oh, whatever. You like bumper stickers? That's cool. It's your thing. Whatever. It's free country. <laughs> but if you're going to put bumper stickers on your car, at least put them on straight. Hey, these guys got bumper stickers? Seems like I've been seeing a lot of bumper stickers today. No, these guys got none. See, that's classy. In my mind, if I see a bunch of bumper stickers on the back of a vehicle, that doesn't look classy to me. It looks trashy. No offense. But it, it makes the car look kind of rednecky, trashy. You know what I mean? Is it just me? I'm not a bumper sticker fan. But what bothers me the most, and I don't know why it bothers me because it doesn't really have anything to do with me, but I have to look at it, okay? I'm the one that's sitting behind you staring at your crooked bumper stickers. At least put them on symmetrically and straight. It's the least you can do. You're going to put a sticker on your car permanently? Put it on straight. Does anyone else get bothered by that? When people put like bumper stickers and they're just all over the place, doesn't really matter, they're not even really straight, they're totally crooked. You can tell they were literally just like smacked on as they were walking past. I don't know. I don't know. Gotta rant about something, right? And today's bumper stickers. I got stickers on my truck too. I try not to go too excessive and I try to make sure they're symmetrical and straight. It's gotta look good. It's gotta look good. But I don't think I would actually ever put an actual bumper sticker, a permanent one, on my tailgate, you know? I got magnet stickers. I always get the, they're exactly like a bumper sticker, but they're just a big magnet, right? And I just stick them onto my tailgate. I want to let the world know my message. Then at least I can take it off when I'm tired of it. Or if I ever want to sell the truck. I don't know. Are any of you those people? You know which people I'm talking about. Are any of you one of those people? Has like 50 bumper stickers on the back of your car? Let me know. Let me know. And what do they say? What's your message? Let the world know down in the comments. You obviously got a lot to say if you got 50 bumper stickers. I want to hear it. Well, we're in a small town in Wisconsin. Out for a walk. I forgot my GoPro in the truck, so I'm making do with the phone camera with the terrible microphone. I do got a Huawei phone, or whatever you say, Huawei, but I can guarantee you, our next phone is not going to be a Huawei. I think I'm going to go, uh, I might get a Google phone next, not too sure. I'm kind of disappointed in the capabilities of this phone, but, I mean, it does everything it's supposed to, I guess. Getting a little chilly. It's not as cold here as at home. As you can see, there's no snow out here yet. You can tell it's going to come soon. Sun goes down so early now already, and now daylight saving time. I, you know, I don't like daylight savings time. What a dumb idea. Then why can't we just stick to the same time? I always have to confuse everybody twice a year, changing the clocks. I don't like it. I think it's dumb. I like places like Saskatchewan that never change their clocks. Never. They're always just on the on the same time. It must be extra confusing for them if they ever move out of Saskatchewan, like the Manitoba or Alberta, and then having to learn to change your clocks back, and spring them forward in spring, and back in fall. I don't know. It would be much easier if we didn't do that. So in fall time, Saskatchewan is the same time as us in Manitoba, central time. And in summertime, they spring away from us, hang out with their buddy Alberta for the summer, and they're in mountain time. Much easier. <coughs> Excuse me. We're just doing laps around this industrial zone. We just came from out that way. It's like this big square block. I like walking in the evenings or on the weekends through these kind of zones. Because there's zero traffic, so I don't have to worry about cars all the time. 
Just focus on getting my walks in. I'm trying to get back in shape. So old belly's been getting a little big again. I thought I was maintaining my weight and I weighed myself before I left. And I'm back up to 217 and a half pounds. It's a little lighter than I was uh, when I started my working out campaign or whatever before the wedding. I was at 225 then and I went all the way down to 195. I'd like to get all the way down to 180. That's my goal. So we'll see. I'm starting a little late in the year. I didn't do my walking this summer like I wanted to. I procrastinated, procrastinated, procrastinated. And now it's getting cold already. I want to get myself down to 180. 185, but 180 would be nice. So that's 27 pounds. 25 pounds, let's say. That's our goal. We want to lose that. It's also good for our heart to get out of the truck, get the blood pumping a little bit. As a truck driver, you have to make sure you stay active. You have to force yourself to be active because our job, we're professional sitters. We sit all day. It's really unhealthy and it invites early heart attacks. It's also really good for this guy. He's getting older, eight years old now. Got to keep him in tip-top shape as well. Got to keep his his heart healthy. I always, I always say that you know, having a healthy heart is sort of like having a healthy engine, a diesel engine. If you idle your truck non-stop, and that's all you do. You just idle it. All that gunk builds up in what I would say is the arteries of the truck or the heart of the truck. Right? It used to be before the age of DEF, all that gunk would burn out as soon as you uh, left in the morning, right? And that blue smoke would uh, come out the stack as it burns off all that crud from idling. It's healthy for a diesel engine to be working hard. Same thing for a heart. It's healthy to get your heart pumping. You don't want it idling your whole life. So this town that we're walking around in here is called Baldwin, Wisconsin. Are any of you from Baldwin? I'm walking around your town, well, around the industrial zone right now on the south end of town. Parked at the quick trip by the interstate. Walked up here and just been doing laps. Probably do a good three laps around this neighborhood and then walk back. I'm counting my calories again. I'm using that My Fitness app and keeping track of everything I eat and drink. I'm trying to keep it under 1,500 calories per day until I reach my desired weight. Then I'll bump it up to 2,000 a day max. But when I go for a walk like this, I'm expecting to burn about 400 calories. That adds on to my 1,500. So then today, I'll be able to have 1,900 calories and still lose weight. It's a little tedious, but worth it in the end, I think. What do you think, Diesel? Yep, yep, just going on a weasel walk, man, keeping the weasel heart healthy. Yes, sir. Well, that felt pretty good. Walked just over five kilometers, or around three miles. Got a nice uh, grilled chicken Southwest salad from McDonald's here. I think I made good choices today. Let's get back on the highway. Still got about five hours to go before we stop. Nice little town here though. In 200 meters, turn left on 55th Avenue and then turn left in 140 meters. All right, Karen. Good choices, gotta get more healthy. Let myself go for <laughs> way longer than I wanted to. Couldn't believe it when I stepped on the scale at home. I'd gained 10 pounds since the last time I weighed myself. I didn't even notice it, but yikes. I was wondering why I was so out of breath. 
You know, when I would do the simple tasks and simple chores, I'd get out of breath a lot faster, right? I'm starting to worry. Well, now it makes sense. I'm getting fat. Or fatter, anyways. 100 meters. Turn left on 10th Street, US 63. So I can't let myself get any fatter than this. I never wanted to be heavier than 210. I want it, I would like to stick between, you know, like 180 to 200, 200 max, but absolutely no heavier than 210. Now that I'm 217, that's uh, that's the final straw. That's that's the line right there. We crossed the line. In one kilometer, turn right on to your pathway. Oh, there's room to park here. Oh, no problem. Oh, that's an exit only over there. Oh, no, that's that's an entrance or exit. I don't know. I'm going in this way. Let's see if I can get into one of these spots here. And the whole this is really close together. Oh, boy. Yeah, I'm going to try to get in there. Make a U turn if possible, and then take the entrance to the right and three Karen, meters. I know you're confused. I got into a parking spot and everything. It's a real tight spot. I got in there, I walked around the truck. I said, Nope. I don't trust the other guys not to hit me when they leave in the morning. It was such a tight lot. I didn't feel comfortable there. I don't want my, my hood ripped off in the morning. I don't want to get backed into late at night. In 300 meters, turn right on. Line so Karen's all confused now because we went down the road to the next Flying J. It's a much bigger parking lot with uh, much more space and room. In 200 meters, turn right on State Line Road. I'll easily be able to park here and not have to worry about getting hit in the morning. Let's see what they got here. Seems like there's quite a bit of space. If this JB Hunt would have not taken up the entire space here, I could have fit in there. I might still be able to fit in there. No, that bobtail's taking up too much space. Shoot. Oh, well, I could probably sneak in there. Ah, we'll see. I like to park off on the side where I won't be bothered. I think I'm gonna park over here. Right in front of this old scale. <laughs> Diesel, we got the best spot here. For those of you who know South Beloit, the Flying J here, they have this abandoned scale that we just drove past, right? Or not abandoned, but they don't use it anymore anyway. This is where we parked. I almost never get this spot because this spot always goes so early, you know? Off here all by my lonesome. Nobody to park beside me, nobody to bother me. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. And I left my tractor on the level ground there so that I'm not like rolling out of my bed so my at least my truck is level, you know? The trailer goes up angles up here a little bit onto the old scale hub where they used to have it but that's okay i got all my brakes set the truck is level and my steer tires are facing the curb so if the worst were to happen and somehow my truck were to become charged with air while i sleep magically i would roll that way but that would take quite the miracle so you bet we are going to have a fantastically quiet night here double check all the brakes again you guys are my witnesses. They're pulled. It's gonna be a good night. So we got 10 hours from now till when I can start doing my pre-trip. I gotta take 15 minutes in the morning, make sure the truck's all still together, not falling apart, making sure no tires are gonna fly off and kill someone, making sure there's oil in the engine, making sure all the lights are, you know, all the basics. You know, the basics, make sure I 
not going to hurt anybody. And then we'll be on our way into Chicago. This is as close as I parked to Chicago. I was going to go down to Rochelle, but uh, we're running a little later than I thought we would because we stopped for that walk. So it was an expensive walk because now because of that, I'm going to take the toll road down, uh, what is it, Interstate, not 39, Interstate, is it 90 or 94? 90 that goes from the Wisconsin border straight into Chicago, right? Whatever, it's got to pay a few tolls, but it'll save us about an hour or so and we'll get there a little earlier tomorrow. I still don't have a reload, but I'm guessing I'll have one sent to me tomorrow morning sometime. I just want to get unloaded as early as possible so that if there is a reload that I can get there and get it done tomorrow afternoon, hopefully, or at least make it a possibility, make myself available to do that. Cause uh, I would like to head back home. That way I'd be back home Tuesday night. But if I only reload Tuesday morning, I'll only be home Wednesday. We'll see. Trucking, am I right? Trucking. It's always an adventure. Thanks for tagging along on the adventure today with me. Great to have you here. It was a lot of fun. Got our exercise in. Ate good food today. We made good choices. I encourage you to do the same. The best choice you can make right now, though, is to hit that subscribe button on my YouTube channel, Trucker Josh Vlogs. Hit that little bell beside it because apparently if you're, if you're just subscribed to me, you may not be notified that I release a new video every day. Hit the little bell. That way you get a notification. And hit the like button. Share it with your friends if you want to show all your friends how awesome the videos are. If you didn't like it, Give it a thumbs down and share it with all your friends to show them all how terrible they are. Now you all got your homework. I'll see you tomorrow.